Well, good afternoon to you. It's uh, approximately a little bit before 3 Eastern Time here at the Financial Guys on uh, March the 6th. And uh, I know there's some concern out there. I've, I've gotten uh, all told two clients called in, um, you know, with concerns about the markets. And um, uh, of course, I've fielded those calls. If things keep going, I would expect a, a few more, but it seems like most of you um, aren't too worried about this, and that's what this uh, little video PowerPoint uh, presentation is all, is all about. So I wanted to start out with kind of where we are, and then I'll go into my, my PowerPoint. So year-to-date on S&P 500, right now we are, one second, we are down just about 10%. So about 10% for uh, this year, which really isn't that bad. I, I, I know with the way the news is, it seems scary, but it just, it, it, it isn't. If you roll back here, if we go back three years, is that a pretty, you know, pretty big dip? It is. Um, but when you roll this back, I'm just doing all, and you look back, um, it, it just minimizes, you know, kind of how scary that is. So I wanted to, to start there. Where it goes, I don't know. I, I'm not going to be able to answer for you today where the, um, the virus stops, but I did want to allay your, your fears. So... The coronavirus, which I've affectionately named the C virus, just to shorten things up. How does it affect your investments? The first thing I think is important to understand the virus is where it is. So, 82% of all cases are out of China, and about 18% of the cases are in other parts of the world. Of the other parts of the world, uh, there's three major contributors, South Korea with 35, Italy with 22, and Iran with, with 20. Um, the rest of the world has a much smaller portion of cases, and to note, the U.S., um, from a world point of view, is less than 1%. This slide here on the, on the bottom left looks probably the most scary. Uh, while total cases have continued to increase daily, cases have declined since uh, middle of February. Here's the total cases chart, which went over 100,000 today. So that's probably the scariest thing. You can see daily new um, has kind of picked up, but still it, it was at a much higher peak in, in mid-February. So we don't see an increase there. And growth factor also, it ticked up today, but overall, um, it, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be the world ending pandemic that, uh, you know, people have, have uh, fear mongered with. Active cases of number of infected people is dropping precipitously. Total cases cured. Um, well over 50 and then here's where we get to the slides which I think will, will really um, minimize your concerns total serious and critical cases so these are cases where life is threatened out of the total hundred thousand we're we're less than seven and a half thousand uh, that are considered serious and critical and then lastly, to me, this is the slide that tells it all and the one that, that made me feel uh, much less fearful. On the bottom, we have in gold, the death rate. So if you get it, the, the um, current death rate percentages are 2 to 3%. And the recovery rate, obviously, has climbed and is you know, pretty high. So in the 90, probably 7, 97 percent percentile. So far less people died from the disease than the news has led us to believe. 
uh, of course, is a percentage of uh, overall population. Now we start to get into financials. I, I'm, you know, today I'm reporting facts to you. There's a few times where, um, you know, I'll pontificate on what I think is going to happen, but I don't know why the Fed got involved. They think they need to get involved in everything, and they they did a uh, Federal Reserve rate cut. So that was on March 4th. This marks the central bank's largest emergency action since 08. Again, that makes it sound scary, but it really isn't. Um, despite this action of uh, you know decreased rates, the um, the market dropped. So probably the most important thing to know is what is the history um, of the markets during and after the epidemics. These are just, you know, news headlines which just almost always tend to be scary. If you look at uh, this, which was out of City Research, um, S&P 500 trading after, trading days after SARS, avian flu, MERS, Ebola, Zika, and coronavirus, just a note, this is inaccurate because this was um, done on 224. So um, this number has dropped. So that it, it uh, has definitely increased. Remember I said 10%. So, but um, these are the reactions to some of the other viruses. All right, um, where is it longer out? So after the virus is kind of uh, dissipated, what happens? And you can look here, six and 12 months out, there's very little correlation on markets, which is good news. That's the S&P. If you look at a more world broad-based market like the MSCI, uh, we see similar results. Here's six months out, only three times um, where markets left, left negative. So, you know, if this follows the cycle of the other epidemics, you know, six months down the road, um, we'll be forgetting all about it. I wanted to give you this information just so you wouldn't worry that um, I believe that most of these cases will be short term. We're going to be monitoring this, and if need be, I'll put out a more information in the format of emails and videos, etc. Um, but I just wanted to, to let you know that we're, we're monitor, monitoring this. Our investment team is monitoring it. And, of course, um, the disclaimers which have to be on here. So we honor all calls. I always look forward to uh, talking with you no matter the topic. Um, if you have questions, if you have concerns that weren't addressed here, please give me a jingle. Other than that, I wish uh, all of you just a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much.